Meeting someone in space is not as easy as it is on Earth. First, you must adjust your orbit to match that of the vehicle you're meeting, match your speed with theirs as you approach, and then follow lengthy docking procedures, which can take hours. While movies make it seem quick and simple, in reality, these rendezvous require great attention and precision. The vehicles are linked using docking systems that involve numerous safety precautions. But how do they do it? Welcome to Spaceship Earth. In this video, we'll discuss how spacecraft used to dock in orbit, the systems used today, and the procedures for docking with other spacecraft or space stations. In the early years of space exploration, scientists recognized the need for spacecraft to work together and even combine in orbit to form a single structure. The first orbital docking test took place on March 16, 1966, when the Gemini 8 spacecraft successfully docked with an unmanned Ajana vehicle, proving that this could be done in space. Later, during the American Apollo and Russian Salyut programs, spacecraft docked in both Earth's and the Moon's orbits, enabling astronauts to work more efficiently. However, during this period, docking mechanisms and procedures varied from mission to mission and vehicle to vehicle, preventing collaboration between different spacecraft. The first significant attempt to solve this issue was the Apollo-Soyuz project in 1975, a Soviet-American collaboration. In this project, a system called the Androgynous Peripheral Attach System, AP, is used, where spacecraft would align using guide components on their docking units and then connect. Unfortunately, this joint docking system effort was not long-lasting, and both nations continued using their own systems for their respective spacecraft. In the 1990s, during visits of the space shuttle to the Russian Mir space station, and with the development of the International Space Station, ISS, the issue of docking once again became critical. This time, an updated version of the APAS system developed for the Buran shuttle's visit to Mir was used. After some modifications, it was integrated into NASA's space shuttle as well. The main difference in this system, called APAS-95, was a special docking ring that allowed for a soft docking process before the final connection. Interestingly, although this system was designed by the Russians, it was never used by them. Instead, Russia continued to use its own docking system, which features a guide rod and a cone-shaped structure on the spacecraft's hatch for accurate alignment during docking. While this system is considered rudimentary, it offers a more tolerant approach to errors during docking. On the ISS, the Russians continue to use their RDS system, which has been employed on Soyuz spacecraft since the 1970s. Meanwhile, the international section of the ISS adopted a different system based on an advanced version of the APAS-95 called the International Docking System Standard, IDSS. NASA developed a docking mechanism known as the NDS that meets these new standards and vehicles visiting the ISS are now designed according to these guidelines. So how do spacecraft equipped with the NDS system dock with each other? First, the approaching vehicle stabilizes its position in front of the passive docking module on the ISS. This passive docking system has both soft and hard docking mechanisms. The soft docking system consists of three triangular components placed at 120 degree angles, which help align the approaching vehicle. The hard docking mechanism, made up of 12 latches, activates after the vehicle is caught and the first contact is made, ensuring a sealed connection between the two. In addition, there are two separate sockets on the system for energy and, and data transmission between the spacecraft and the station. The active docking mechanism on the approaching spacecraft differs from the passive system by featuring a movable component for the soft docking system to assist with final alignment and docking. This movable structure, also known as the capture ring, is controlled by six electromechanical systems. Precision screws and motors direct the ring during the final approach, correcting any angular differences between the spacecraft and the station. This allows for a smooth contact without the need for additional maneuvers. During the final approach, the capture ring is extended forward from the spacecraft, and at this stage, the spacecraft's speed relative to the station is reduced to just 10 centimeters per second. As the spacecraft approaches, motors on the ring adjust its position to align with the module on the station. When contact is made, three pins on the ring engage with corresponding slots on the station, preventing the spacecraft from drifting back. 
After initial contact, the motors adjust the spacecraft's position to ensure perfect alignment. Once aligned, the capture ring pulls the spacecraft toward the station, closing any gaps between them. At this point, the soft docking mechanism has completed its task, and the hard docking mechanism, consisting of 12 latches, takes over. These latches secure the spacecraft to the station and create an airtight connection. After the latches are engaged, data and energy connections are automatically established. At this point, the corridor between the station and the spacecraft is sealed, but without air. Before astronauts or supplies can move between the two, the compartment must first be pressurized. After pressure equalization and leak checks are completed, the hatches can be opened for two-way access. When the spacecraft is ready to leave the station, this process is reversed. The same system and procedures used on the ISS are also used on China's Tiangong space station. While theoretically similar, the systems on the ISS and Tiangong, a mix of Russian APAS-95 and NASA systems, are not fully compatible. This means that a SpaceX Dragon spacecraft, for example, cannot yet dock with the Chinese space station. Space is becoming increasingly crowded as more people visit and will continue to visit space stations. In the future, the docking processes that currently take several hours could become much quicker, making life easier for those who will live and work in space. Thank you for watching Spaceship Earth. If you found our video helpful, please like and share it. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel to stay updated on our videos about space and space technology.